Hi guys, so welcome back to another video on Service Fabric. In this video, we're going to start to look at data packages, config packages, and environment variables, and how we can use these in Service Fabric. So the first thing we'll look at is data packages. And data packages allow us to package up a file as part of our Service Fabric deployment. So this could be a JSON, XML, CSV file, whatever we want. And as we remember, all Service Fabric services have three main components. They have code, which we've mostly looked at so far, configuration, which we'll look at in this video, and data, which we'll look at now. In order to add a data file to our service, we simply go to our service and open the package root. We can add a new folder here called data. And inside this data folder is where we're gonna add our data files. So we might wanna add a file called test and it's a CSV file, so test.csv. And inside that file, we will just have some random CSV data or random tape tabular data, which I'll fill out now. So we filled out the test CSV file here with just a couple of columns. So we can see we've got the title column, ID, name, and age, and then four rows of data. And this could be a much, much bigger file in a real system. So the first thing we need to do is we need to right click on the file here in the Solution Explorer and go to Properties and then change Copy to Output Directory to Copy if newer and then Save. So next we can go back to our Product Actor service. We'll be using the Actor for this tutorial, but the concepts are pretty much identical with Stateful services. I'll just show the one different detail in a few minutes. So we also need to register the data package we've added in our service manifest for the service that we are using the data package in. So if we open the service manifest.xml for our product actor service, we add the data package right underneath the config package here. So we want to add a data package. We want to call it data and we need to give it a version number as well. So we'll just give it a version 1.0.0 and that will allow us to add this data package into our actor service and then to access the data in our actor service we can go back to the product actor service class which is the base class for our actor and in any of the methods we can access the data so we'll do it in on activate async for now we simply need to say this dot actor service dot context and then we want to call code package activation context and dot get data package object. And then we give it the name of the data package. So data and add our semicolon. And then we can save this in the variable called data package. So as you can see, this is a type of system fabric data package. And now we want to get the path from the data package and combine it with the name of our CSV file. So our data path will be path.combine to combine both the data package path and the name of the file. So to do this, we just simply type data package and dot path. And the name of our file that we added is test.csv the file was called something different, this is where we'd change the name of the file. And finally, we want to read out the contents from this path and use it in our service. So we can add another variable called contents. And we have that equal to file dot read all text. And we simply pass it the path. So in this case, it's the data path here. And this should give us a string object which contains the contents of the file we're looking to use. So we'll quickly run our service, deploy it and run it. We'll call any method on the actor which should trigger on activate async and we'll see what we get in the contents of our file. Okay, so our service is deployed now and we're gonna trigger a call to on activate async using Postman. So we can see we hit our API endpoint and we jump into on activate async. So we see we have a reference to the data package object here and the data path, which is C service fabric dev cluster and what node the data is stored on. 
and then we're able to access the contents of the file here. So we can then parse the contents of this file and use it however we want in our service. So the next tool we'll look at is configuration. So in our service, we might want to have a different configuration based on our deployment. So we might want to look in our application parameters file. We see that we have a local one node file and we have a local five node file. We might want to set some values different depending on how we're deployed. So to do this, we can simply add a parameter in any of these files in the application parameters folder. So for instance, in the local five node.xml file, I'm going to add a parameter and it's going to be called db config and we'll simply set its value to be called five node and we'll do something very similar in one node we'll call db config except we'll change the value to one node so this means we can use a different value for db config when we're running in a five node as opposed to a one node cluster it's important that we keep the name the same so we can access it no matter how we're deployed. So once we've added the configuration value in our application parameters files, we need to go to the application package root and the application manifest. And then we need to add it here at the top in the parameter section. To add it one more time. And in this case, we're giving it a default value, or we can leave this blank if we don't want to have a default value. So the name as we had is called dbconfig. In this case, we won't give it a default value. We'll leave that blank. So the final thing we need to do in this file is we need to add this new parameter in a config section in our service manifest import for whatever service we want to use the parameter in. We can use the parameter in multiple services if we want, but we have to ensure we add the correct configuration for each service. So I'll just delete these comments and split it out a bit so it's a bit easier to see. We can see we have two service manifest imports. We have one for the API service and one for the actor service. The actor service is the one that we're going to add this db config config parameter to. So we do that right under the service manifest ref. And we add a new section called config overwrites. Inside that we have a config overwrite, which we give a name. And usually the convention is to call this one config. And inside our config, we can set certain settings. And we have a section which we give a default name, say we might call the section database. And inside the section is finally where we can add our parameter. So we'll give it the same name as above db config, although this isn't required to have the exact same name in this instance, and we'll give it the value. So the value we want to give it needs to be in square brackets like this and needs to be the same name as the parameter here. So that means it's reading in the value from the application parameters files. So here we've created a config override called config. We have a section inside the settings called database. And inside that section, we have a parameter called db config. And we can have multiple parameters in a single section. And we'll just change this section name to be uppercase to be in line with conventions. So the last thing we need to do to configure our service to use this config is we need to go to the service in question, which is our product actor service. We need to go into the package root and we need to open config and settings. And here we need to add another section using the names used here. So in the settings file, we can see we have several sections already defined. We need to add another section here underneath. We'll add the section. The section needs a name. In this case, the name should be the exact same as the section that we've given it in the application manifest. Simply database. And then we can add a parameter here. So the parameter also has a name. And again, the name should be the exact same as the name of the parameter in the application manifest. And the value is left blank, which means it will be read in again from the application manifest, which in turn is reading it in from the application parameters files. So now we have to access this value in our code. So again, we can jump into the actor service. And for simplicity, we'll do it in the on activate async. For now, we'll just comment out the data package code. So again, we start this off the same way. We call this actor service dot context. 
then we want to get the code package activation context. And in this case, we want to call get configuration package object. And we need to pass this a string called a package name. Remember in our application manifest, we gave the package name, the name config. So we put that in our configuration package object. And then we want to call dot settings and sections. And then we need to pass in our section name, which again, in the application manifest, we call database. And finally, what parameter we want. So parameters again is a dictionary. So we need to pass it in the key. And the key is the name of our parameter, in this case, db config. And then to get the value, we can simply call dot value. And we can save that to a variable called db config, which is a string. So when we run this service and deploy it in a one node configuration, we should get the value one node here. If we deploy it in five node config, we should get the value five node. So let's boot up the service in one node config and see what we get. So our service is deployed now. So let's trigger a call to on activate async or any act or method which will trigger a call to on activate async and see what comes out in this db config value. So we'll just call one of the API endpoints again. It should proxy to our actor. And we can see we jump into on activate async. And let's continue on here and see what we get for db config. As expected, we get one node. So we'll change our cluster configuration to be in the five node configuration just to see that we get the db config changed to five node. So we'll just redeploy our cluster now and we'll jump back in when we get that set up. Okay, so we've redeployed on a five node configuration and we'll hit the API endpoint again and see what we get for the value of db config this time. So we'll hit the API endpoint, which will proxy to our actor service. We'll try get the db config from the config section. And as expected, the value for db config in a five node configuration is five node. So the final thing I want to talk about in this video is environment variables in service fabric. So just to clean everything up, we'll just close all of our documents for now, just so we have a clear workspace and we'll see how we can add environment variable in our service fabric application. So we want to again, open our application manifest and the place where we add environment overrides is in our service manifest import section in our application manifest. So we can see we have two service manifest imports. We have one for the API service, which by default actually already has an environment override and one for our actor service, which doesn't have any section for environment overrides. So we want to add a section here in our second service manifest import for environment overrides. So we can just copy that in from our section above. And we don't want to have the environment name ASP.NET Core environment. Instead, we'll call it something different to say DB port and a value of just say a random port like 8000. And we can see here we have the environment overrides and we have to define the code package reference and we have it equal to code with a lowercase c. This I think relates to the service manifest. So if we look in the service manifest for the actor service, Remember that this is the section for the actor service. We can see that we have a code package called code with an uppercase. So I think in the application manifest in our environment override section, this has to be a lowercase version of what we have in our code package here. So speaking of the service manifest, we also have to add some configuration for our environment variable here. So we can add environment variables in our service manifest. So we have a section right under the entry point for environment variables. And then we just want to add the environment variable that we just added in our application manifest into our service. And the name has to be the same. So we'll copy that in as DB port. And the value can be just blank because we want to use the value from our application manifest. So the final step is we want to actually use this environment variable inside our application. So we can open up our product actor service again, and we'll go down to the on activate async, just comment out this db config section. 
and we want to access our environment variable which we called db port so we'll set a variable equal to db port and we'll access this just like any other environment variable that we access in c sharp so we'll just say environment dot get environment variable and we'll give it the name so db port Double check that that is what we expect. We have a lowercase b here, so we'll just put that in. So we'll run our service again, and we'll just see, can we access this db port here? And remember, this is imported as a string, so if it was a numeric value, we'd have to cast it. We'll just deploy, and we'll come back, and we'll call a method on our actor to see if we can get this db port from our environment variable. Okay, so our service has started now. So we're just going to again hit the API endpoint to trigger a proxy to our actor service. So we'll hit the endpoint, this will proxy to actor service. We'll call the on activate async and we can see we have accessed the DB port 8000. So the last quick thing I want to mention before wrapping up the video is that this was obviously for actor service. So we called this dot actor service. The only difference between accessing config and data files in actor services and in stateful and stateless services is that we call this dot actor service in actor services, but in other services, we simply just need to call this dot context and everything else should be the exact same. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.